on behalf of the Rutan branch, I want to welcome you all here this evening. Um, Ari Gellin, who is the founder of the Rutan branch, unfortunately he's in Haifa and he couldn't make it this evening, but he sends his, his best regards and he knows that it's going to be an amazing and really very special evening tonight. We have a, a very, very special guest lecturer, Professor Eliyahu Rips. Thank you. Eliyahu Rips, I'm just going to give a very quick, uh, short uh, introduction was uh, born in 1948, in December the 12th, so the same year as the State of Israel was declared, um, in Riga in, Lit in Latvia, and um, grew up in Latvia, and uh, his parents, uh, amazing story, his mother was the only survivor, all her siblings unfortunately uh, were killed, uh, but they were part of the family that fled through to uh, the Soviet Union, and survived and his father was a mathematician from Belarus and also a lot of his wife and his his daughter were also killed and he remarried and um, thank God he remarried and um, Professor Rips grew up in, in, in Riga in, in Latvia and what happened was um, that uh, Professor Rips was has the distinction of being the only student the very first high school student in Latvia that participated in the International Mathematical Olympiad. It's quite uh, an achievement. Anyway, in uh, Professor Rips, uh, at that time, as a student, he enrolled in the university in Latvia, in Riga, and was very active in mathematics. And in 1969, and this is a phenomenal thing, in 1969, when we had the uh, Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia, Professor Rips did something well, that is quite remarkable. It had been done once before in, I think, in, the, in Czechoslovakia, where somebody uh, doused his clothes in gasoline and lit himself and, and died uh, Jan to Palach, protest. The, the Czech student, Jan Palach. Yeah, Jan Palach, the Czech student. So in Riga, in the main, I, I was there a year and a half ago, but in Riga, in the main, uh, the main uh, monument, um, Eliyahu Rips doused his clothes, which is hard to believe, but he'll explain to you, and he lit the candle, and he had a placard before he, he, had, he took it off, saying, protest against the Soviet invasion of uh, Czechoslovakia, and he lit the candle to douse himself. That's unbelievable. Baruch Hashem, thank God, there were bystanders that saw this and immediately put out the, the flames and uh, was burnt on his hand and I think at the back of your neck and very very soon afterwards members of the KGB came and uh, arrested uh, Eliyahu Oops. and Eliyahu was telling me in our interview uh, before that the mood in the country when the Soviets um, before they reinvaded Czechoslovakia the, the, the freedom that was had in Czechoslovakia had spread and they felt it even in, in Riga I mean in Latvia it was not in the mainland of Russia, in Latvia. Mm -hmm. So that is quite amazing. But what happened is he unfortunately was held by the KGB and then he was imprisoned. And uh, as a mathematician, there was a lot of uh, participation by worldwide mathematicians and his petition. Eventually he was released after being in a psychiatric. They put all the dissidents in a psychiatric hospital, but he was released. And then a year later, he, after being denied entry into their visas to come to Israel, they allowed it because of the pressure from outside and he came to Israel and joined the Hebrew University and then he went on um, in 1975 to get a PhD in, math in mathematics and um, what happened, he started looking into, he, he's coming to Israel, Elia Rips told me how he, for the first time he saw a religious Jew growing up in Latvia during the communistic rule, all forms of Judaism were, were basically nearly distinguished. By coming to Israel, we, it was all in the open and could see a religious Jews, he said it was like a different planet, totally different. So he got involved in uh, with Rabbi Bravinder and, and started to learn about his traditions and what Judaism is all about. And um, speaking about the topic for tonight, uh, in 94, together with Daron Witzman, I think, and Joav uh, Rosenberg, they published an article 
in the Journal of Statistical Science, and this was a major breakthrough, because this is the Ivy League of, uh, of journals, and this was on the Bible codes, and uh, it was the equidistant letters sequences in the book of Genesis, and it claimed the discovery of enclosed messengers in the uh, Hebrew text of, of Genesis. And in, 19, in 2006, um, Fizeriahu uh, Rips co-authored Torah Codes, A Glimpse into the Infinite. So tonight's topic, and it's going to be amazing, and we really look forward to this, and we really appreciate you being here, is Old and New Torah Codes, Statistical Proofs, and Structural Theory. Okay, so without further ado, I want to introduce our guest speaker, and we really thank you for coming here this evening. Thank you. Ready? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now, maybe better few the lights here because then we will better see the screen. Okay? Yeah. So, good evening. Thank you for inviting me here. Thank you, Mr. Green. Thank you. So, we are returning to the same topic of. So folks, I was interested from this from 1978, this is already 39 years, which amount of time. So, and let me introduce the very topic of it. So, we here see something on the screen. Let me explain the table we see on the screen. So, on the margin, we see e Many people want to come G. a bit closer. B, with the second commercial that writes the book of Exodus. Gimel is the third commercial the book of Leviticus. So, the number we have, Mem is chapter 40. And Aleph is a chapter one. So we are on uh, between the end of the book of Exodus and the beginning of the week. And then we have the number of verses. So just it is just for the orientation in the text. The text is written here in a slightly unusual way. By which I mean that it is written without blanks just at one stream of letters. But in order to make it better visible, I just mark one word in blue, the other in gray, blue and gray, so just to make understood and understandable where we have the words. Of course, because we remove all blanks, we do not distinguish between mem and mem speed, mood and mood speed, etc. for us it's the same thing. Okay, this is about the explanation of the book. This is actually one very old finding. Here, and also this will introduce the idea of equal skips. So, here on this table, we have the holy name, the tetragrammon which is, appears here with several skips. For example, if I take skip 5, mean starting from this letter U, we count 5 letters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we have the letter A. Then we count 5 letters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we have A. So we read the letters of the holy name, unpronounceable great holy name. We skip of five. And also I introduce it, what means with equal skip, just the same number. For example, here we have in this color skip eight. I mean, you see where it is the beginning, yud. Eight letters will be A. Eight letters will be Vav, eight letters will be A. Or what will be 13? We start with this Yud, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, so if we skip of 13, etc. So we see here a number of appearances of the holy name. Apart from the appearance of the plain text, they are marked by yellow. But we have with the skips 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and 55. Professor, obviously, I don't know. 5 and 8 becomes 13, 13, 21. Oh, you noticed it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not stupid. So, but why in the first place did you come up with 5 and 8 to begin? Let me share your discovery with the rest of the room. This is correct. So, it turned out, for let me stress, that as far as we deal with positive skips, there is no other skips except for this one and skip one. So there is not we skip three or four or eight or, or seven, just only the skips. Well, where did this come from? The five, eight, thirteen. Just a moment. Let me say, what was, you see, how? Take five and eight. What will be the sum? Thirteen. Eight and thirteen will be the sum. Twenty, like I said. Thirty-one. Thirty. 13 and 21 will be 34. 21 and 34 will be. So you see, in this sequence, each next term is the sum of two previous ones. This is the so called, the famous sequence of Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci sequence, when it's at 1, then 1, 1 and 1 is 2, 1 and 2 is 3. 2 and 3 is 5, 3 and 5 is 8, and continues these numbers. So, wh why we would see in this passage of the Torah, actually this is the beginning of Leviticus, all five of them, and the next one is in the end of the Exodus and in the beginning of Leviticus, why we should have Fibonacci numbers. I don't know. It is very interesting. I have no answer. Just I'm registering the fact we do hear the Fibonacci numbers. Why the start of five? I don't know. No? Right. Why don't have three? Why do not have uh, now 89 with the next one? Just I am presenting the fact as it is. I don't know. At Slightest idea why it should be, what does it designate? But what is seems very pretty sure to say that this is intentional. So having a very well known recognized sequence of numbers, six term of it, it is very slight chances to become unintentional. So in any case, we have here this idea that signals us that there is something that is worth further looking. This we understand it. Something that is definitely seems to be intentional. So Torah tries to hint us something. It is intentional. Here. What does it mean? I don't know. Maybe some have an idea. I don't know. In any case, it seems that it is worth further study. Now let me show the next slide is also in the same. I will just put the next excuse me, please. We can do in general. Um, okay, the next the next slide. Um, no, no, let me excuse me. Uh, excuse me, but you show me once and then I'll go Yes. By the Okay, this is also the same place. This is actually the beginning of Leviticus. The first 13 verses in the beginning of Leviticus. But, but for, to read, is the first open passion. And we looked here with a computer of the appearance of the word Aharon, the high priest. 
actually the plain text describes the work of the priests on the sons of Aaron. Now, when one looks at the number of letters Aleph, He, Resh, and Nun, then one can calculate the mathematical expectation of how many times we should obtain the word Aharon when equal keeps by random. The answer is a mathematical expectation is about 8.3. What happened actually, we have here 25 appearances of Aharon with equal skips, they are marked on site. For example, for it is starts here, Aleph, one, two, this is Aleph, and then it will be one, two, three, four, A, one, two, three, for Reish, one, two, three, four, noon. So all of them mark appearances of Aaron with various skips, and the total number is 25. When the mathematical expectation is eight or something like this, and the real appearance is 25, you are using the Poisson model, we estimate the probability of this happen one to a half a million. So also it is extremely unlikely that this should happen just by chance. So this actually was the first uh, finding by computer. It was very old. And it it was in the in the half in the first half of the eighties, nineteen eighties. So this was the beginning of the scientific study of Torah courts. Now, let me now skip a few tables, which I may be return to them later. I will go in a series of tables, which actually was my goal here to report. But what I think, let me go to this table. So, what happens here? So, okay, let me also give a number of explanation. In the book of the Torah, I have 304,805 letters. Roughly 300,000 letters. Now, it is very easy to look that any word of five or six characters in any text of the length as 300,000 will appear many thousand times. This is a simple statistical fact. If you will take a word of five or six characters, it will appear many hundreds of times. If you take a word of six or seven characters, it will appear several dozens of times. If you take a word of seven or eight characters, it will appear few times. Any word and expression that has more than eight characters has very small chances to appear. And generally speaking, which is unit of length, these chances are going down by an order of magnitude. It could be done more precisely. We know that in Hebrew there are 22 characters. Their frequencies are known. For example, the most frequent characters are Aleph, Hey, Vav, Yud. Their frequency is about 1 to 10. The most real characters are Gimel, Zayn, Tet, Samech. Their frequency is less than 1 to 100. And all the rest are in between. So just knowing the letter composition of a word, one is able to calculate the mathematical expectation of a period of a sequence. Now, therefore, we know that any relatively short expression will appear many times. So the very fact that it appears is not interesting if we have uh, additional circumstances that explain why 
it should be known unlike. In the first table, there was because just the numbers, just Fibonacci numbers, they belong to a famous mathematical sequence. Another pattern was that we take the smallest, the border with the smallest skip, the minimal skip somewhere appears, maybe several times, or maybe the first, the second, the third minima. So this was another basic pattern that we started to study when the word appears with the minimal or the close to the minimal pattern. Okay, and now I turn into this table. On this table, we have the be very beginning of the Torah. The first day you see Yom Echad is marked in green. Then you have Yom Sheni, it is marked in yellow. So, Rashi, the commentary, reads Yom Echad. Any girl with the written translation. The fee said the Rishon Abarasha, Aya Lovito, Yom Rishon. Shkemoshe Katu Vishavayamin. So Rashi asks, because it says the second day, the third day, the fourth day, it should say the first day. Why it says day one, not the first, it would be logical, as it says in other days, but it says day one. This is a question of Rashi. Yes, this question is quite very, quite understandable, right? Then, okay. Now, what uh, what Rashi answers? Thank you very much. What Rashi answers to this question? I read the answer. So the fish aya kadosh guruku yachid beolamo shalom ibru malachim ad yom sheinikach lefurash bebreishit ra. So Rashi says. Because at the first day, the Kodosh Boboko was one in the world. Because the angels were not created until the second day, according to Midrash Bereshitra. So, this says that Yom Echad is a, the day of the one. Not just the first day, the day of the one. Yom Shel Echad. Yom Moshe Echad. This is what Rashi says, explains this particular. Now let us read the text of the second day. Yomer Elohim ii rakia betoch hamayim, vibabdil ben mayim lamayim, vayas Elohim et rakia, vibabdil ben hamayim asher metachat lerakia, ben hamayim asher mal rakia, vayichem, vayikra Elohim lerakia shamayim, vayere vayvoker yom sheini, it says about the heaven, it's about the waters, but it does not say about the angels. So the plain text of the second day does not say anything about the creation of the angels. But it was observed, I fortunately don't remember who I don't know, if we look on this man that is marked in red and count six letters backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, Lamed. One, two, three, four, five, six, Aleph. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, Kaf. One, two, three, four, five, six, Yud. One, two, three, four, five, six, Men. So, with the equals, if negative six and negative it from the left to the right, we have the word Malachim angels in the text of the second day. Now, of course, we should ask how unlikely is it? Maybe not unlikely, because Malachim is a word of six letters. So, in principle, it could have so let me show you the following table. If you, if just one, press one down. Thank you. So what we see on this table? This table shows the general appearance of many times of the word Malach. The left column shows the skip, the next to the left, but is the number of the letter which it starts. 
So eight times it appears with skip one, which means skip one appearance in the plain text. Okay? Skip one, I mean reading the text letter by letter in the plain text. The next with the equal skip will be five, starting with letter number 777, it appears with skip five. Next one will be the letter 232, it skips negative five. This is our appearance. We mark it in here. Now there are many appearances bigger skip. 17, 20, 21, 34, etc., 55, 58, etc., 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 etc. So in different places. So it turned out that this appearance of Malachim is the second minimum in the Torah. We spoke the most interesting would be the first one. This is not the minimum, this is the second minimum in the Torah. Now let me say, as we mentioned, in the Torah is more than 300,000 letters. Now, the text of the first day, if we can return for the moment of the first day, just up. Thank you. So this is less than, this is 180, 148 letters, less than 150 letters. 150 is 1 to 2,000 up of 3, so 300,000. So this passage is actually less than 1 to 2,000 of the text of the whole Torah. If the first minimum would be here, the chances would be about 1 to 2,000. But because it's the second minimum, one can calculate approximately 1 to 1,000. So actually, it is interesting. Here, happens something that more or less has the chances one to a thousand. So it, it is still interesting, even knowing the statistical picture, it is interesting that we have the appearance of Malachim just in this place. Okay. Let me go first. <coughs> Just excuse me. I will go first. Let me see if it opens. So, there are a few interesting tables, but we have just pressed for time. Let me go first. Here we have. We are in the, in the end of the book of Genesis, chapter 49. It says, Binyamin Zeev Itrof, Vabokir Yochal, Ad Velaerev Yechaleik Shalal. What says Rash, Yechaleik Shalal? Mordechai Vestech, Shehein Mi Binyamin, Yechalku Et Shlal Aman. Shenemar Yenei Beit Aman Natati Leestech. In the of it says that Mordechai and Esther, that they came from Binyamin, they will divide between them what they have from Shlau from so, it turns out that in this place appears Le Esther with a skip negative 20. This table is arranged with 23 letters in each line, in each row. So, when we count for Lamed of Esther 23 letters back, we come to the Aleph. 23 letters back to summer, to tap, and to reach. This is not the first, it's the second minimum of the Esther. Appears precisely in this place where Rashi points that Esther and Mordechai will divide the shlau, is the shlau? The spoils. The spoils of Haman. Thank you. The spoils of Haman. Okay. 
Now, this is a finding by, uh, by Joseph Forst uh, many years ago, published in this book. Okay, but you can pay attention that Mordechai and the stair live in the time of the Rus Babel, after the destruction of the first temple. So at the time the Torah was given, it was quite a distant future. I mean, more, it was a distant future from the time when Torah was given. And here we see with this second minimum, precisely where Rashi points to it, Le'ester Shlal Aman Atati Le'ester. Let, I, let me go first. Also, I skip to some interesting table because we need to move up there. Now, actually, there is a series of interesting tables, but this is, let me spare it for a different lecture, maybe. So, we have here, Vayama Poma Shalibhar Hashem Elokeichem Godesh Akechmo Shama Tabiu, it continues. So the place where Hashem will choose to put his name there. Rashi says, Vayam Makom, the Gomer, Venu Rachem Beit Abkhira, Yerushalayim, Tifri. So Rashi says that he has a commandment to build the Beit Abkhira, the temple in Jerusalem. Now, Yerushalayim actually has several hundreds of times of in the Torah, not in the, not in the Torah, in, not in the Torah in the Tanakh, always have the short spelling with a few exceptions. So Yerushalayim is a short spelling, appears precisely here, you see this is a finding by Rabbi Raber, we skip 29 with the second minimum in the book of Deuteronomy. You see the word Yerushalayim precisely crossing this verse. Okay? You see Yerushalayim with a skip of 209 backwards and this is the second minimum of the word Yerushalayim in the book of Deuteronomy. But again, we have a word in in this case, a very important word, keyword that Rashi stresses, that appears precisely in the place where Rashi commentary says that you should build Beis Amirdesh, Beit Abkhira, in Yerushalayim. And actually, it is encoded in this place. How many letters can be this? 209. You see, in the upper right corner so indicates a skip. Negative corner? Negative. But I don't know. Some are negative and positive. I have no idea of the reason. Just I'm just presenting the fact. I have no explanation. Okay. Usually no explanation. Okay. Now let me go to the next very important series of examples which I will describe now in more detail. <coughs> It was, so we are now in the end of the Torah, in the Parashah Zot Abrecha, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33. The Amim Ha-Ikrao, Sham is Behuz Yibchei Tzedek, Yishef Ha-Yemim, Inakus Meneit Kuneiko. Amim Ha-Ikrao, the nations will gather to the mountain. It doesn't say what nation it doesn't say what now one it's just unnamed nations will come to unnamed mountain. But Rashi does specify the explanation. It says Rashi Amim Shel Shifte Israel Harikau the Har Hamoriasfu Kola Sifa Alde Kriyahi Vesham is Bekhubarigarim said so Rashi says that the Amin is actually the tribe of Israel. And what mountain? The mountain Moria. They will came on the festival, they will came to and to bring their uh, 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 
die vriend zijn. Oké. Nou, long ago, Dr. Alex Rottenberg observed that actually we have here the name Moria with a skip negative to. Look, this mem skip to letter will be Vav, to letter Reish, to letter U, to letter V, Moria. So actually when Rash the plain text doesn't specify the name, the harshest mountain, Rash says it is Har Moria, and actually the minimal skip of Moria appears precisely in this place with a skip negative to do you see it? Now, and then actually this minimum is attained two times. This is one time here in some other place also the skip to. Okay, which is very interesting. Now, Shifte Israel, uh, Ephraim Yaki Reutman, a nice guy from uh, Lakewood, observed that Israel also appears with a minimal skip to. You see, Yud, second letter is Shin, second letter is Reish, second letter is Aleph, second letter is Lamed, Israel. The minimum skip of Israel, actually it appears two times in the Torah, one here and other, other place. In any case, here exactly we behave Israel just as Rashi specifies it. I mean that the nations actually is Shifte Israel. Shifte also appears here with a skip of 77. Shifte, this is the seventh minimum in the book of Deuteronomy. Interestingly, it says you Ha'am Shifte Israel, the nation of the tribes of Israel. This is interesting because the nation is singular, tribes of Israel is plural. It's the singular that is plural. But actually, this doesn't appear in Rashi. It says Shifte Israel. Okay. It turns out that other terms appearing in Rashi also appear closely in this text. The next table I will show is Baregalim. Rashi says Baregalim. You see, we skip negative uh, uh, 95. Baregalim appears here also. The Second minimum is the whole Torah. Also the same place, Amim Harikau, and we have Bar Regalim from Israel. By the way, we cannot see them simultaneously on the same table, because one table has a number of letters in ratio 77, and this has 91. So we need separate tables to see them, but both of them are present here. Let me go for the because it would be too large. Because yeah, because it will be in different directions. Because here, just when we have chosen the number of letters to, to make this vertical, but we cannot do simultaneously for two different tables. But J as full appears with a skip 400 and for with the first minimum in the group of Deuteronomy. We have shown it with 51 letters in each line, just divided by four. Then for years, who appears every fourth line. Also near the same place. Kriya, you will see here, this is the second minimum of Kriya in the book of Deuteronomy. Let me go from there. Then we will see also Asifa, Yeas, Fu, Asifa, Yeas, Fu, Asifa. This is the same as for this skip 204. In the common sound, we have as if I the minimum skip 14, the minimum skip in the voter. But it turned out that there was seven words that Rashi added in his commentary to the text. And all of these seven words, I don't, oh, this is short, too short, but all these seven words appear nearby the same skip. How to estimate the odds? 
of course, we obviously see that something very interesting is going on, but let me just try to estimate the odds. The first one was, uh, as I had before, Moria with Harry Crow. Actually, we use here a model that was uh, made by Professor Alec, random placement model, model that we compare the situation when we preserve the same skip, but we look at the random placement and we ask what is the minimal length of the minimal interval that contains both modes. For the word Moria with Amim Hari Grau, the odds are one against 30,000. It is logical because they let this more than 10 letters outside of 300,000 letters of the Torah. So 1 to 30,000 is a, a, a logical number. For Israel, we have 1 to 6,000 because it's little size. Let me return to the previous table to see it. Now, then, so the first class was all finding by. Dr. Alex Rottenberg, the second was finding by Brian Reutemann a few years ago. Now it was so interesting that I checked the rest of the world. It, it turns out that all the seven words that Rashi mentions appears here. If we take the five other words, they are not so close, but if we take them collectively, then the odds for them being so close to this place are one against five million. Actually, there's 48 against 200 million. The program made 200 million iterations, and it was 48 over 200 million. It's roughly 1 to 5 million. So, what happened here? We have here, let me see. When I'm calculating it, let me put aside 1 to 30,000, because this is a place. Why we are looking in this place? Actually, we could do very different things, but because this finding by Moria is one well-established, very good finding, so this, let me just, just take a reason why we look here. Then we do not calculate its odds, just put them aside. Still we are left with one to six thousand for Israel and one to five million for five other worlds when we do the calculation using the Fisher statistics, so the result will have roughly one to a billion. So, in other words, the overwhelming odds that this is intentional. Now, here let me say something. As I mentioned before, there was an old controversy that arose after we published our first paper, and the uh, skeptics accused us in manipulation of the input data. Okay, and they actually tried themselves to manipulate the data on war and peace. Yes. <laughs> now, what is important here? That just there are many indications that nevertheless we were right in our experiment. And recently, the one Bistum had made a new experiment that justifying this old one. But here, it must be said that when we did this experiment, so there is no question at all why they have chosen these words. Because this is what Rashi tells us. So there is no question at all about the choice of the board. And this is a big advantage of this experiment because here the data collection is straightforward and obvious. And the odds are actually much, much better than in our original experiment. One to a million, then it was one to 60,000, so the odds are so much better and there can be no argument at all about the data collection. So in other words, we have here a full 
the, this encoding, first it appears a very small skip, second it appears in the plain text, speaks about the Holy of Holies. Okay. Aaron uh, and Kapovet, uh, this is placed in the Holy of Holies. So we have two effects simultaneously. That this word appears at wall with such a small skip, and the second, it appears precisely when the play text speaks of the Holy of Holies. Now, there is another pattern which is um, interesting. Let me take this example, uh, which I call a parallel transition. We have here two different tables. One is in the Deuteronomy, the other in the book of Genesis. And what happens? Here we have the skip eight, we have the phrase, Masos Ba, Mashiach in Asei Marum. The Joyce is coming, the Mashiach will raise high. With a skip of eight, this is interesting in itself, we have such a long expression with a, such a relative small skip. Now, it's also finding by Frank Reutzmann. Let me take the word Mashiach, which appears here with skip eight, in another place, also appearing with a skip eight. You see here Mashiach appears also in, in the Genesis with a skip of eight. Here we have in a semarom, short but to be. And here we also have in a semarom. So what happened here? We have tables up in some way obviously connected. Their connection comes from the same word appearing in two different places in the same skip. This is called a parallel transfer. It turns out that some word encoded in one table do appear in the other table as well. So this is another pattern, a formal structure of pattern. We will meet it in further examples that we observe. So now let me give a series of examples as far as I can determine knows me. This is the Russian tables. Now, the next example. The next example is started with the finding of Baruch Cohen. And here it has the parallel meeting. Excuse me. The skip is 72. The point is that this, the words connected by meaning appear with the same skip or the multiple 72. So you have Mikdash Shlishi, the third temple, appearing in the book of Genesis, chapter 5, verses 20 27. By the way, in this case, 72 is a very important number, it means Chesed, 72 is Chesed, or Chesed Now, then, in the same place, with a double skip 144, we have Parmashiach Ben David. You see, this a dark blue, we see both the words, Parmashiach Ben David. Then, in the same place, we have in group Be Moria in the Mount of Moria. Also, the double skip this is a finding by Igor Isetsky. So, you see, all these words appear together also in. Uh, we have it Ha Menachem in the skip of 288, which is four times 72. We have Ha Menachem. This is one of the names. Of the Mashiach. Maran is the name in all, Menachem in other. So we have here a number of words, all of them are connected with the redemption, with the 
סוף טמפו, וזה משאיר בן דוד, המנחם זה סוף טמפו, אין זה מאונט אוף מוביה. ומובן טרייס טייסקי זה ראית אקסטרים ואנלייקלי, את כל זה וורד אפיר אין פארל, אין סאצ' אה קומפקט פורם, סאם אסטימט ואדם ביי ארט לוי, זה אופייסלי, אבל זה ביגר זה וואן טרמיליה, מאץ' ביגר זה וואן טרמיליה. having all this in one space. This is a pattern of parallel meetings. What is the text here? The text is the ten generations from Adam to Noah. It is not clear whether it is connected. I don't know. Now, now some known historical events. Let me say in, in 208, there was a terrorist attack in, in Hodu, in India. Then there was some great uh, uh, hotels, and also there was a Jewish institution, Beit Chabad, and the people that were very cruelly murdered by the terrorists. Here is All of them were killed there in the big place. And also when you see a Torah scroll that was found there, so then, as it was then um, made a copy by the Hatzalah, so you see several of these are turned by the, by the ballots. And here, this place also, this part that he showed, this This is damage done by the ballet. Uh, uh, so where it is, you see. Hashem El Moshe, Acharei Mot, Shnei Bnei Aaron, Bekirbatam Lifnei Hashem, Vayamut. This is Parasha Acharei Mot, the reading on Yom Kippur. There were several other places with the, the, this Atala man could, uh, but he preferred this because this is a Yom Kippur reading. In any case, Dr. Moshe Katz has looked on the codes corresponding to this event. So take Be Bombay, Be Beit Chabad. So let me show the following table. Finding by Dr. Moshe Katz, the minimal skip Bembo Bay, the skip 10 appears here. Look, Bet, 10 letters, Bet, Bab, Mem, Bet, you, Bembo Bay, this is a minimal skip of this word, 10. The Bet Chabad will be of skip 159, because we have 33 in each row, 3 times 33 will be 159. So you see Beit Chabad, the minimum skip, appears also here because we took the number of letters in line in 33. Three times 53 is 159. So we see here this Beit Chabad, they appear together this place. So thank you. Then uh, the one which added Hatkafat Terror, Hatkafat the minimum skip, Terror is the third minimum, Islam is the third minimum. All these words appear in one place. So the, the word should appear. The interesting effect is they do appear in one common place. Now the odds for these words to appear in one common place is uh, 15, about 10 million. So uh, approximately, bit less than one million. Now the question is, where, in which place does this occur? So let me look. You see, This is the same parasha acharei mot. So what actually happened? That the encoding of these words does a cue. This place that we have seen. 
So here it is encoded. So these codes appear in this place of the Torah that was torn by the Balits and the photographer chose to show this place. So it means that every Balit has his address. So they pointed to the place where this story was encoded thousand years ago. So if we return to this table, so we'll see that I have shown where are the letters that are damaged. So you see this in the table by orange. These are the, tape, the letters that were damaged. We've seen them in the previous table. Now, the next story is about three young men that were kidnapped and killed by Arab terrorists. It was in the summer of 214, it is Tafshin Ein Dalit. Eyal, Naftali, and Gilad. And this table was sent to me by Gil Baruch. Actually, there was search to find their bodies. It took about three weeks, and then their bodies were discovered in a place called Herbert Arnav. This was a place where their bodies were discovered. Now, what did Gil Baruch? He looked for the expression Mot Nearim, the death of the youth. Mot Nearim, the minimal skip is 1,377. And the table in the coding should have 1,377 letters in each room. And nearby modern rim, you said Eyal, this is the name of one of them. By the way, it's sent in this picture all the two other names, but they are far distant from this, so I just cut it, just tick this part which is close to this room. Also, we have Mechabed is a terrorist, and Hey Tav Shin Ein Dalet, this is the York, the York, excuse me. This is Tav Shin Ein Dalet in red, and in green, the Mechabed terrorist. Okay, this was a table that sent me by Gil Baruch. He told me that actually he discovered this table three days after the search began, but he was, he, he was reluctant to show it because he helped for a better outcome, because this points to a bad outcome, so he just kept it to himself, but when the search ended, so he sent me this table. So what, when I received this table, I have done the following. I look on the repetition of the word eyal. You remember I have I spoken about parallel repetition with the same skip. You see the word eyal appears once more with the same skip and also eyal with skip of six crosses. So this is another appearance of Eyal. Eyal is one of the number of the name of this rebus. Now on the next slide, we will see that one can read two sequences nearby. The air Haraz. Haraz is a secret. So disclose it, explain it the secret. And on the other side, the Tachtai Te'ayen. The Te'ayen, look beneath me. Tachtai Te'ayen, look beneath me. What should it be? It points to a certain action. Look beneath me. What should one, what should one do? Literally, look beneath Eyal. It says, look, please me. What do we see there? It turned out 
in this very place appears the word Armaf. This is a place where the body were found. So it says Kirbet Armaf. This is the geometric point, a geographic point where their bodies were found. So it points, look, you miss me, actually what you will see, the place where their bodies were and they are actually found. So here is something special. In a sense, the code gives us a number set of instructions what to do. This didn't happen, but in principle, one could do it in the side of the in the time of the events, then they point to the place where their bodies actually were. So this is another kind of the code that we have instructions, it's a valid code, but in the real time the principle could have been followed and lead to the discovery of the body. Now, I think that um, I have to make the, the story is very long. I think I make it shorter. There's a long story that I would love to tell, but let me skip it for another time. Very interesting. But let me end by something very interesting. Here, the table is constructed so let me first give some introduction. About 200 years ago, a person called William Perry, Perry wrote a book called Nature, uh, Natural Theology. Natural Theology. And he argue, argued that because we see in the world things that are so interesting, so, so obviously the, 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 the so complicated design, that it must be a designer that did them. For example, if you have a clock, a watch, so there must be a watchmaker who did this watch. His argument is called the argument of the watchmaker. Actually, there was a lot of argument about his reasoning. Um, even a book by the famous atheist is called The Blind Watchmaker, because he tended to say that it could be the watch could be unintended. Of course, it is absurd, but this is his atheistic face, in any case. So this is the argument of the watchmaker. So giving this just a background. Now to explain this table. The expression that was chosen to take this table was the following. Can ani kayam? The meaning was keep. Yes, I do exist. This was the the, the expression that, that defines the table. What we read on the other side of it, Hashaan, the watchmaker. The watchmaker. <laughs> so, having in mind this argument around the watchmaker, this is an answer that indirectly refers to this this to this argument. Yes, I do exist, the watchmaker. <laughs> okay, I think I will stop here. It is a lot, a lot, it could be told more, but it is pretty close, and everybody is invited to continue. Please, questions. I just have a general question. With all the different people that have looked into this, it seems to be pretty irrefutable. How many of those people who started out as Philonim, Gidden, Gaiim, whatever, even a Gaiim should be taken by this and said, something here. 
Exactly when I started to do this, he, I then showed him the, the table that was known then, for example, the Aaron table, etc. After several months of discussion, he went to the Arachim seminar in Mechuvah. And since then, he was religious, he was a professor of mathematics in the Weizmann Institute, now retired. Okay, and now my friend Alex Rottenberg came from Russia in, uh, in I mean, 1990. Also, a, a, a friend brought him to me inside, the, it was the time of the Gulf War, with, if you remember, this nylon, uh, uh, nylon room, the silver room. So, and then I saw, I showed him these tables. He is a mathematics and a programmer. What happened? He said, if this is true, this is the most important word in this world, uh, thing in the world. So, he did not just buy it, he made a program, he checked it by himself, and he made sure. And he continues to work on the code. We are friends for a very long time. He wrote a book, All This Is Truth, in English, about his discoveries of the code. Other person, Dr. Leif Schwarzman, actually, the people who were most influenced by this were mathematicians. Because they were able to appreciate the precise meaning of it. And others, now, of course, when these skeptics has just published their uh, re 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 reputation, so many people believe there is nothing interesting in the courts. But some are interested, the people who would like to see it, cordially invited to come to me or to call me. My now phone is 052 <laughs> is <it> 7 <laughs> So, and then I, there's a lot of material. What I showed is maybe one of a thousand of thousands what I actually have, but actually I must to stop in some place, but yes, yes. please. What did Rabbi Weissman discover? Oh, yes. uh, he, in, he had some very interesting uh, things about the period of Torah with Skip 50, in the beginning of different Humashim. Then, for a several system of appearance, the four species, species Abba Minim, also with Skip 7. 50 in prescribed places in each in different homage. Now the, his most incredible discoveries were counting with the number of letters is the number of letters in the Megillat Esther. In Megillat Esther, which is about 11 or 12,000 letters, I don't remember the precise, he found something extremely interesting with such a big skip. But his, his discoveries were not correctly described by his students. In the book, Torah Hamed, they mention it, but their description was not correct. And then Doron Wittstum was able to restore the original findings by Rabbi Baisman, the Bait Megillat Esther, with a skip of letters Megillat Esther in Torah. And one is referred to his, the site of Doron Wittstum about Torah, Torah code. Then, then one see what actually Rabbi Baisman had in mind. He did this before the Shoah in Nitra. 
And without a computer, obviously. So how did he do obviously it? Obviously, without a computer. How did he do it without a computer? I was told, I believe, that he went or before to Rabbi Gradinsky from Vilna to ask about this. For to Rabbi Chaim Moiser. Yes, ask Rabbi Chaim Moiser. So it was before the show. How could he do it without a computer? This is a great miracle. How it was, it is a wonder. It is a stroke of the genius, it is Seattle Dishmaya. We don't understand how he was able, especially with the skips of seven, twelve or something, thousand letters, and he had correct findings about the Megillat Esther. They are not brought in the correct way in the book Torah Chemet, but the correct form is restored by the wrong wisdom on his side. I heard that he did some of his work in his bunker in uh, Bratislava. Yes, they were in bunker. Uh, after uh, the, he escaped from the train, and for several years they were hiding there until the end of the world, and then he went to, no, he went to, in a little Mount Kisco. He went to Schweiz first. And then first, and then for ultimately... He went with Kastner. Kastner took him back there. First of all, thank you for a fascinating evening. And uh, in a presentation, you know, we have an event that has happened that we know of, but the three children have died. Then we put the post together and we said, wow, this is it. Now, is there any chance that now in the future we can anticipate the events by putting the post together? You is it see, possible or is it? There were several attempts to anticipate events. Several of them were successful, several failed. Yes. Professor, is there any uh, any research or anybody else's research to use the Fibonacci uh, sequence since it's occurs so often in nature? Please. The Fibonacci uh, sequence. Yes. yes. Using it as a code, as a backdrop for the codes. No, just it happened to see. I, you see, this is a kind of unique, unique finding. I did not intend it. Just when I looked in the beginning of the book of the Bible, because of the Aaron cluster, then I checked for the holy name, and suddenly I realized that the numbers given a computer are just the Fibonacci numbers. It, it was such a big surprise that remain, I, I remember precisely what it was. I was sitting in some bars, looking at this table, and wow, these are Fibonacci numbers. I saw these numbers, just printed out of the computer, and looking on this, these are Fibonacci numbers. Is there anything that you can tell us now that uh, is relevant? I don't know. This is a new, <laughs> unique finding. I, I only say that it must be intentional. What is the meaning of it? I'm completely lost. Yes. I, I'm so amazed that Rashi had these insights. But can you, where? I mean, was this divinely inspired? One. Without any doubt, Rashi had Ruach HaKodesh. The whole Rashi had Ruach HaKodesh, but he also based himself on Midrash Chazal. So in a very systematic way, he had chosen those Midrash Chazal that answers the questions in the chart of this. Nilobati El Alem Shuto Shel there are a lot of Midrashim he have chosen those to resolve the textual difficulties. Um, the Torah is, according to our view, God-given. There's something else that's God-given, our DNA. Okay? Has there any, was there any work done on re-encoding the DNA from the four symbol alphabet? No, it, it, it is a, a, it is a very basic field of study. I don't know whether somebody undertook it. But correct, correctly, 
one has to do this. It is very worth it to try to get this one. Okay, so we're going to close. Okay. <coughs> this uh, yeah, right. um, rips on behalf of Ari Gellin, the written branch, and all of us here. We are so grateful for your talk tonight. You. It was amazing, Thank incredible. I know we describe our appreciation. Thank you. And uh, I to say, Hashem, thank God, when you were in uh, Riga in 1969, there were bystanders that put out that fire. Because you've ignited within us a thirst of knowledge, and uh, your work is incredible. And may you just thank have Mazel and Brocha, and thank you, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.